This is the 2024 GMC Sierra 3500 HD Denali. And in today's Vehicle Visionary video, I'm going to give you the ultimate tour of this truck. And there are quite a few changes to talk about. And while it's not a full redesign, there are a lot of significant changes to discuss. The front end received a little bit of a refresh with the bumper design, with the grille design, and a few other little things here and there. Nothing major as far as the exterior goes. However, the big changes come with increased horsepower and torque, especially if you go with what's under the hood with this truck, the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. That means you're going to increase towing capacity and you're going to increase payload. The exterior color on this truck is volcanic red tint coat. It has an atmosphere with brownstone interior. And if you're saying, well, what does that look like? There you go. There's your answer. And the biggest changes will come here in the interior. An updated infotainment screen, overall look of the dashboard. I think it gives it a more modern look than we've seen in the past. And according to a lot of you, that was what you wanted to see change the most. So let's see what we have here with the changes on the front end. Now you will find I'm going to lock the truck here and then hit the unlock button and you'll see the animated headlights. All I did to do that was push the unlock button on the truck. You don't have to do anything special. You will find the large grill here, nice large lights, LED daytime running lights, projector beam, LED headlights. You do have Intelli beams, so they're going to make the appro appropriate adjustments. My tongue can't make the appropriate adjustments sometimes, but the headlights can, the Intelli beam headlights can when you're driving down the road. Also, auto high beams. And you'll notice right here, this truck is about to be delivered here at Morgan Buick GMC. So I'm not going to demonstrate the front camera washer, but here is your forward facing camera. This little notch that's sticking out right here is the front camera washer. In case you see that and wonder what that is, it sprays a stream of windshield washer fluid across the front camera every time you run the windshield washer fluid. So there's nothing unusual there or nothing special you have to do. You also have LED fog lights. You have the tow hooks down here on the lower portion of the front bumper, so you know you're going to be pulling out the Fords, the Rams, even the full-size trucks such as Toyotas and Nissans as well, and even the mid-size trucks. So, overall aggressive look, a lot of chrome here. That's a good thing as far as that goes. I think it matches really well on this particular truck. And we're looking at a tire size, believe it or not, that is 235 on the width. You do have an 80 series sidewall wrapped around the 18 inch wheels. And that's gonna be the same at all four corners or with all six tires in this particular case. And I mentioned earlier that you had the LED lighting in a couple of different areas here on the front end. You can see that I have them turned on. Well, maybe not because it's a little bright out here today, but it is there. You also have the IntelliBeam headlights. They're going to adjust appropriately for the driving conditions you're dealing with. And here with your trailering mirrors, you're going to have the LED lighting that is not only found here, but you'll also find it on the other side as well. Now these are turned on right now. Turn signal indicators are built in. These are the trailering mirrors. So they will extend out. They also fold or unfold with the touch of a button and the button to control the position of the power folding side view mirrors is right there as you can see. And you can push that if you need to fold the mirrors in for whatever reason when you're parking the truck or whatever's going on. There's also a setting within your infotainment screen under vehicle, under settings and then vehicle that actually allows the mirrors to automatically fold in when you lock the truck. You also will push the middle button right here to extend them out for trailering and obviously you'll push it again to bring them back in. And something else here, let's say you're washing your truck and you say to yourself, you know, I really need those power assist steps to stay deployed in the position they are in right now. Well, you can go into your infotainment screen and do that as well. 
So there are different ways to deal with that depending on the situation and what you're dealing with. Now you do have a lot of chrome, like I said earlier, in a few different areas of the truck. It seems to match well with this exterior color. And you'll notice the button that's gonna be on the front doors here on the door handles on the driver and passenger sides, that is going to be your passive entry. As long as you have the remote on your person, you can use that feature. And speaking of the remote, here it is. Now you have the remote start feature here, and you'll notice that you have the button here to lower the tailgate. Now you can only use that for the power down feature, and that's because this is the multi pro tailgate. If you want the power up feature, you're going to have to go with the conventional style tailgate. I don't know that most people are too worried about that, but that is the situation where that's concerned. It's a pretty light tailgate for what it is. And then back here on the rear, you have the bumper steps to make it easier to get in and out. They're nice and deep, plenty of room for sure footedness. And you also have the bed steps. That's going to be right over here. It's going to be on obviously each side of the bed on the side of the truck. And so if you're wondering, do you have the button on these power assist steps that allows these to come back? Well, since you have this here, you don't have that. So you don't have anything to touch with your foot right there to have the step come back. But that's the situation here. Not really a big deal, but just wanted to show you what's here. And we also have the cab light up there and one more LED light here to show you. Hopefully that's showing up on the screen. I think it is because it's dark enough back here in this area of the truck. So what powers this truck and what are the numbers? Let's open the hood and find out. And if you're wondering if this air intake on the hood is just cosmetic, no, it's not. That actually is functional. And under the hood is the 6.6 .6 liter Duramax diesel. Puts out a plentiful 470 horsepower and the torque number is higher than ever for these GMC Sierra HD trucks at 975 pounds feet of torque. Made it to a 10 speed automatic transmission. The trucks have a 25% increase in low end torque and you will find a two speed transfer case. How about your gas or should I say, let me correct that, your fuel tank size. That's right, sometimes those little goof ups come, but I corrected myself so nobody has to do it in the comments. This is a 36 gallon fuel tank. And the rear axle ratio here is going to be 342. Now let's talk about some very important things here. Number one, max potential. Notice I said max potential when properly equipped payload, 7,442 pounds. I'm sure there's probably someone out there that's gonna say, no, I don't believe that's correct. Well, make sure you look that up on the internet before you leave a comment. And max towing capacity is a potential of 36,000 pounds. Obviously that's not going to be across the board. Number one, you'd have to have a regular cab version of this truck to accomplish that, but you at least know what's there. And here's something that's interesting. Depending on how many people you have in the truck and their combined weight, that could even include payload in the bed, different things like that is going to determine how much you can actually tow in that given situation. Max towing doesn't mean you can hit those numbers across the board in every single situation. And that's what the sticker is for right here. That will tell you what you can tow. It gives you the formula to, formula to figure that out. Now, I'm not going to go through that today because I think most of you can probably figure that out very easily with the information on the sticker. Plus, we're going to try and keep the video from being too long. Now, this truck has a very interesting tailgate here. If you haven't ever seen the multi-pro tailgate, well, it's a lot more than just a conventional tailgate as we see right here. So here's the first thing that we have. Number one, you could use this area as a table. Eat lunch right there, whatever the case is, everything's in an easy place, it's nice and high. You could put your phone on a tripod and have an online video meeting. Whatever you need to do, you can do that. Or you can even use this to help with, let's say you're hauling wood or something that's going to stick out further and you don't want it sitting up quite so high in this area. You can drop this and do that. You also have the ability to flip this section up and use it as a bed extender. And that's not the only bed extender here. So let's take a quick look at what else we have where that is concerned. And we'll go ahead and drop the tailgate. 
a look at bed extender number two. So there's what we have where that is concerned, but we're not finished yet. Let's just say, for example, you need to gain access to this rear portion of the bed. Maybe you need to plug something into your 120 volt power outlet, for example, or there's some tools or whatever you need up here in this area and you need to reach in and grab it. Well, you can make that a lot easier by simply dropping that section right there just like that. And guess what? I don't even have to stretch out, stretch my arm out. Kind of have to stretch my tongue to avoid tongue twisting, but you see what's going on there. And that's not all we have here. Once again, you can use this area for what is ultimately going to be the step that makes gaining access to the bed a lot easier. And you have the handle right here. That stows away when not in use. We'll put it in place. That makes it easier to have something to grab onto to make it a little bit easier to make that jump from the ground to the step. It is a little bit higher with this truck than it would be with, say, a 1500. And back here, you do have a couple of options. You could go with the kicker audio system, or in this case, you have the lighting right here, the lights on each side. So a couple of different options where that's concerned. Also, you have a total of 14, or excuse me, 16 different tie downs. Three in the front, three in the rear, and then the two there in the middle, as you can see over the fender well, sitting above the fender well, and that's gonna be on each side for a total of 16. You also have everything ready for your receiver for your fifth wheel or gooseneck. As you can see, this model does have the bed liner, and the Denali logo is going to be stamped into the front. And we saw the cab light earlier, Right there in the center, you can see the window. That is a power sliding window. And I gave you a brief look into the interior earlier to show you the interior color. Let's take a little bit more in-depth look at what we have here. The armrest is in a nice position. It seems to be comfortable when I give it the armrest test. A lot of nice materials here. You have the baseball style stitching here and your conventional contrast stitching and the piping. Nice, large door bins. Also have an area that can be used as a bottle holder right there. And you have the inserts for the floor mats right here. I don't know if I can get that to pop up. There we go. So you can take those out if you want to. That makes things a lot easier to keep everything nice and clean, depending on what you're doing, what you're doing with your family, with your friends, with your race team. I don't know, whatever the case is. That way you don't get that carpet dirty, you can always put it back in. And you can see that the seat cushions fold up on both sides. Not only does that open this back seat area up for additional potential storage, but you also have the under seat storage as well and the tools to change a tire if you need to. You do have the spare tire located underneath the rear of the truck. Let's see if I can get this down. And apparently it was easier to lower the seat cushions with the camera turned off. Hmm. Interesting formula to that, right? Just kind of something to give me to laugh at me about. And here within the seat backs, the in-seat storage, you'll have that on each side. That's very nice, very useful, a nice use of what's there. On the rear seats, we'll find the rear seat pockets on both sides, and nobody should ever go thirsty in this truck simply because of the fact that there are cup holders everywhere. I showed you what's in the door bins. You have two cup holders right here on the rear of the center console. You'll also find the rear air conditioning vents. The buttons right here control the outboard seats that are heated. And then you'll also have your connectivity options, USB options right there, a couple of them. And right here, the fold down armrest and more cup holders. There's <laughs> quite a bit there. Like I said, nobody should go thirsty here. And there is a look from the inside on the power sliding rear window, at least that middle section right there, you also have the rear window defogger. And in this case, you have the sunroof. Now this is the only option for a sunroof with these trucks as of 2024. Tell GMC down in the comments if you would prefer to have an option for a panoramic sunroof. I know some of you are saying, I'm enjoying this ultimate tour, but I'm curious if I ordered one of these trucks and it was specked out exactly as what you're showing in the video today, Tom, what would it cost me? Well, here at Morgan Buick GMC, the price is $94,515 as the truck sits. Let's see what else you're going to find beyond what I've already shown you. Obviously, the 
Door panel here on the front door, basically the same as what we saw in the rear. But here's something that's going to be different from the rear seats to the front. You're going to have the 14, excuse me, 12 way power adjustable seats with both seats. They're heated and ventilated. Power adjustable, the power adjustments are right here. You have the Denali logo right there on the door sill, as well as the GMC logo down there with the floor mat. And there's again a lot of storage throughout the interior of the truck. There is what you have on the side of the center console, but that's not all. Sounds like an infomercial, doesn't it? We have the upper and the lower glove boxes here that offer plenty more as far as space goes. And you'll have your one touch buttons right here that are going to make things pretty easy to deal with. I probably don't need to tell you too much about what's there. Now you might look in this area and say, well, wait a minute, Tom, I thought there was a wireless charging pad there for the price point and a very, very high trim level for the truck, basically the top trim level. Why is there no wireless charging pad? Well, there is, it's just right here. So it's changed positions. You just drop your phone down in there, no big deal. Cup holders obviously here, and it is a very large center console, which means there's a large lid, plenty of real estate to use that as an armrest and plenty of space within. We do have some USB ports right up here, by the way, in addition to what we have right here, as well as a power outlet, and then the removable tray that can be used or just left out if so desired. And there is a lot of space located underneath that particular area. And we'll also find the controls up here. I'm gonna show you what all is here so you can just see it, because I know there's things up there that some of you ask about. There we go, we got things to lighten up a little bit for you. And this control right here in the center is going to control the functionality of that sunroof. It is going to slide and tilt open. And you already had a pretty good look at what's here on the driver's side door panel. Everything you would expect, don't know if you saw it earlier or not, but right here you have your two settings for seat memory. That's a good thing. And again, over here, like I said, you've got your power adjustable seats and then your power parking brake, drive mode selector, and everything to control the lights on the exterior of the truck that I showed you earlier in the video. The controls here are for your head up display. And here's how you're going to turn off or on if you need to, depending on what you need to do, the auto high beams. Now, one thing I am a little surprised at here, at this price point, you don't have a power adjustable steering wheel. It is manually adjustable, tilt and telescopically adjustable. It just seems that when you're paying that much, it should be power adjustable, but I don't know how many people are that concerned about it. And here are the animated graphics on the screen for this truck. Some people are going to say, oh, I don't really care about that. And that's okay, but I did want to show you because it's here. But I tell you what, there's a lot more here to talk about, including what we have right up here. You've got your conventional style mirror, or you can flip the lever on the bottom there, and you see that it is a camera mirror, the rear view camera mirror. That makes things easier to see behind you. You see a lot more that way. You can adjust the angle. There's controls over here on this side to do that. It does take a little bit of getting used to, but once you're used to it, I think you'll like it a lot. Now, one thing I wanted to show you here, here is your 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. Fully customizable, by the way. You can make a lot of changes here, and all we're gonna do is, I'll show you in real time here, basically, instead of just telling you about it, you can see that I pushed that arrow right there. And if that screen doesn't come up immediately, just push the arrow until it does. So you have display layout, you have a couple of different presets here, actually four different presets, or we can hit that arrow and go back and you can individually customize things on the left side, the right side, the lower gauges. You can see everything that is there. And if you get to a point where you say to yourself, ah, I'm not really happy with this. I wanna go back to the default settings and start over again. Well, there's where you're going to do that, that reset to defaults down there. And all I'm doing is scrolling with the scroll wheel right here. And when I want to select something, I just push on that. So it's very easy to deal with, a very simplistic setup. Steering wheel mounted controls are here. And earlier in the video, when I was telling you about running the windshield washer fluid, and the front camera washer at the same time when you clean your windshield, here's the button to do that. So if you were curious about that, now you know. 
And there are varying opinions about what's on the right-hand side of the steering wheel. A lot of people say that a truck is not a truck without a column shifter. Tell me what your thoughts are on that. Some people like it, some people don't. No harm in either view. Also, let me show you real quick, not a lot to talk about here, but you have normal and you have off-road for your driving modes. So in case you were wondering, that's what you have. And you can see the changes as far as the overall design across the dashboard. In fact, you might have even noticed over here on the left-hand side that instead of these switches and everything sitting on top of each other, basically being in a vertical position, now they're horizontal. So also, and I don't know if I can show you because, well, let's see if we can brighten things up a little bit here. Maybe we can show it against the black tundra sitting across the way from us over there. But there is your or your, I shouldn't say screen, your head-up display. I had a little brain fart there for a second. But you can see that there's several things you can go through and changes you can make information you can bring up. You can also change the angle and position, or I should just say position, that suits you depending on where you're sitting, how tall you are, that kind of thing, as far as how you position the driver's seat. And this is the 13.4 inch touchscreen. It might look complicated, but I promise you it's not. Very easy to learn, very easy to use. Wireless connectivity for your cell phone, that makes life a lot easier. You can see down here that we have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. So, or should I say Android Auto and Apple CarPlay? But anyway, that's what we have. They're grayed out right now because, well, nothing's connected. But a very, very nice layout. Definitely looks modern. But let's go in here and look. You have you have your cameras right here. You also have Google Assistant, by the way, so you can use voice commands for literally everything. It's pretty amazing, almost almost everything. Google Command or Google won't, Google Assistant won't drive the truck for you, but that's okay. And you can see you have the overhead view right here. We also have our front camera right there. And when you see down here those two dots, you'll see the orange and the gray dots right there. Well, that means you have more than one camera view. So there's the rear camera view. And then we also have the overhead view where we can see that the front or the rear. The same thing with the side view mirrors. You can see what we have there. Also, if you need to hook up to a trailer and there's no one to help you out, that helps. And there's other things you could do with that. If you're worried, you might hit something behind you. Well, there's another way that you can look at that. And excuse me, one last thing. I did want to show right here. If someone's hiding out, maybe kids are playing hide and seek and you want to cheat. I don't know what you might be doing, who knows, but somebody might be hiding in the bed or sleeping in the bed. And if you're looking and saying, is that who I think it is? Well, you can zoom in and make sure. <laughs> so just so you can see what's there. And something else I want to show here, obviously you have everything for trailering right here. I am somewhat limited on what I can show with that because I don't have a trailer to hook up to the truck. It's just one of those things. But you can see what all is there. But let's go into vehicle settings because there is a lot to show you here. I'm not going to show everything. I'm just going to kind of scroll by, so to speak. But the thing I want to do is go here into vehicle. And I'll show you what we have. You have teen driver mode. I'm going to turn buckle to drive back on because that's the way it comes from the factory. Make sure you use your seatbelt when you're driving. But if you need to move the truck, uh, from one side of the parking lot to the other, or you're letting somebody out of the driveway, whatever you're doing, well, you don't need to necessarily put your seatbelt on to do that. So you don't necessarily have to have buckle to drive on in those situations. And how about your collision detection systems? You have alert type right there, automatic emergency braking, front pedestrian braking. I'm not gonna read everything out because you can see what all is here, but it's a very simple system to use. And here's something interesting. You have the option to touch the screen right here, there's actually a physical button here to get back to the previous screen as well. And obviously when you go into reverse, let's see, well, since I put the truck into, into buckle to drive, I'm not gonna change all that. But when you go into reverse, your cameras will come up again. And one thing that's different, since this truck's pre-sold, I can't do a test drive today, but one thing that is different for 2024 is if you turn on the camera, let's just say I had the front view camera on, you actually can drive with that on the screen now. That used to not be the case. I wouldn't look at it when you're driving down the road, but I have had people ask me about how to do that in the past. Well, you couldn't 
but that was in the past, not in the present. So tell me what you think about the 2024 GMC Sierra 3500 Denali. Is this something you plan to buy for 2024? Curious to know what your thoughts are. Maybe you're gonna buy a different trim level, a different exterior color. What are your thoughts? I'm curious to know what you think about this truck. I do want to say a special thanks to my friends at Morgan Buick GMC for loaning me this truck for the day and a special thanks to each and every one of you for being kind enough to give me the opportunity to give you a vision for your next vehicle. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to hit the like button. That helps me out a lot. And if you haven't subscribed to the Vehicle Visionary YouTube channel just yet, please consider doing so. That way you don't miss future videos. And if you would like to learn about additional vehicles you may wish to consider purchasing, check out the video that's on the screen right now and I will see you there.